All right. Well, here we are, March 11th today. I thought now would be a good time since we're in the month of March. It has been a whole year, a whole year of an outbreak here. Let's take a look at where California is in terms of our hospitalization numbers. Again, like I've done in the past, these are uh, separated out by individual counties, uh, normalized to population to help us compare uh, apples to apples. We're not comparing Los Angeles with 10 million people to you know, middle of nowhere county with uh, 10,000 people. Um, and just as a point of reference, and I've drawn this point of reference before, uh, anything really above this mark around here, anything that goes above that, that's the point where you're actually starting to run out of hospital space for the additional COVID patients that you're, you're dealing with. So anything above that, anything that gets above that line, you've got to be creative in how you're running your hospitals. You've got to set up field hospitals. You've got to shuffle patients around. You've got to do a lot of things that we would rather not do in order to manage the additional load on your hospitals. So just keep that in mind as we're going through each uh, county individually. And you will notice, and I mentioned this last time, everything started going up here around the same time, early November, early November ish, peaked right after the new year. And each county has really, you can see, it's been going down roughly around the same time, roughly, uh, rough proportionally similar rates. So let's take a look. First, uh, Bay Area. So here we've got Santa Clara County here. You can notice they things got pretty bad at the peak of that, at that January peak, and then have since dropped down to levels that are pretty comparable to what uh, we had over the summer. Uh, you can see uh, just below, just below where they peaked during the summer. So that's good. And hopefully we'll continue to see those declines. Alameda, you can see they were kind of just pushing up to their limit there and dropping back down. Contra Costa County, San Francisco there, San Mateo County, uh, Sonoma County, Solano County there, Monterey County there, and Santa Cruz, Marin County, never really got that bad, and Napa County. And that's the, those are your Bay Area. So you can see uh, the, in, in terms of proportion of, in terms of total cases, you know, Santa Clara County, largest population, the, you know, peaked at a, a relatively higher level than most of the others. Um, in, in terms of normalized population, you know, I guess maybe Monterey County, uh, which is a smaller county, uh, peaked at a higher, you know, relative to the population. If we go more to Northern California here, so here we got Shasta County really peaked earlier uh, before the others, I'd say, and then was uh, dropping down afterwards. Uh, Humboldt, nothing interesting happening there. Not really a lot happening. And you can see uh, Tehama, Lake County, uh, uh, Siskiyou, I can, I can never pronounce that one. Lassen, Glen, Del Norte, Trinity, nothing happening there. Uh, Modoc, nothing happening there. And again, I've mentioned this before, just but probably good to mention it. Because this is plotting both confirmed cases as well as suspected cases, these really small counties here, like you know, a county of 8,000 people, 9,000 people, those can fluctuate a lot because you'll get a suspected case. And then for one day, you've got a, a high percentage of cases. And then it turns out, that, no, the person just had a regular flu or a regular cold. It was not COVID. And then your number drops back down immediately afterwards. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind when you're looking at the smaller counties. Now let's move on to more central California. Here we've got Sacramento. You can see uh, those it peaked kind of in that problematic area. Uh, Placer County there, uh, Yolo County never really got that bad. Uh, Butte County, Butte County, Butte County, uh, El Dorado there, uh, Nevada County. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so I mentioned this before, just another mention, because you, I believe Yuba County has uh, cases from neighboring counties. They're hot, you know, so like, Counties right next to them, nothing, and then Yuba County a lot, it's because they're they're they have the COVID patients there in the hospitals in that county from from surrounding counties, um, so it's not that 
necessarily they had a ton of cases that they're a small county, but they've got that ho a hospital that's just seeing a lot of uh, COVID patients. Um, so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't follow the same rules of the don't go above this line. Um, uh, Amador County there, Calusa, Plumas, not, nothing happening there. Sierra, nothing there. Alpine, nothing there. So you can see a lot of these counties, the reason they don't have any hospitals, it's not because they didn't have any cases. It's, you know, maybe they had a couple of cases, but they went to a hospital in a different county or something like that. It's one of the things that you get with these really small counties. And then, of course, we got Los Angeles, right? And so at their peak, Los Angeles, that was, it was looking really as bad as New York, practically, at the, when New York peaked at their, at their worst. The New York peak was probably somewhere around up here. Uh, so there's uh, Los Angeles there that has finally dropping down. Although I, I had talked to a, a doctor, uh, what was it, two weeks ago in Los Angeles? It would have been somewhere around over this time. Um, and he was saying uh, that they're, even at this point over here, their ICU bed, their, their hospital was still packed out. They, they did not have extra, any extra beds, didn't have any room in the ICU. If you showed up there with a broken leg or a car accident or something, they wouldn't be able to do anything for you because they just physically did not have any room in their hospitals. Um, so they're, they're, they've been steadily dropping down ever since San Diego. There's San Diego. Orange County got pretty bad at their peak. Uh, Riverside County there, San Bernardino. Uh, Ventura County there, Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo didn't really get that bad. Imperial County, very small county, had a lot of, or not a very small, but smaller county, uh, had a lot of cases relative to their population. I, I'm I'm wondering how much of the bordering with Mexico played a role in this. Um, I'm not sure if they had part of the reason, maybe that they had higher hospitalizations, is maybe they had. Uh, residents with dual citizenship, and maybe they were uh, coming from uh, Mexico, being they, family in, uh, in the U.S., or maybe they uh, were citizens in the U.S. but were coming from Mexico, getting treated. Not sure. Um, I don't have really good information on that. Then, uh, yeah, and other counties, not other Southern California counties, not much happened in there. Um, then uh, back to Central uh, California area, we've got Fresno. There, you know, Fresno got pretty bad there at the at the worst of it relative to their population. They're down now. Uh, there's Kern County, San Joaquin uh, Valley. There's their, uh, Stanislaus. Uh, they got pretty bad too there. Uh, Tulare County, Merced never really got that bad. Uh, Madera County, and we got Kings, uh, San Benito, uh, Tulumne County there. Uh, Calva, uh, Calvareras County, uh, and not much happening. Yeah, so a lot of, so you'll notice a lot of these counties, especially the smaller ones, never really got to the, you know, breaking uh, the hospital system. Although the for a smaller county, the, this line might not be quite as accurate because the the ratio of hospitals to populations might not necessarily be the same as for a larger, more crowded. Um, uh, county. So it's been interesting to observe these trends. Um, I, I am still not entirely sure what the main contributing factor to so many states going up all at the same time, peaking all at the same time, and, and dropping back down around the same way. Um, there, so this will be interesting to, to keep our eyes out on the data in the, in the weeks to come. I suspect, given that things are opening back up, a lot of things returning back to normal. I'm, I'm seeing some states that are like, we're, we're lifting all the restrictions. Uh, you guys just be responsible, do whatever you want. Um, I think we're going to get more cases, even with the, the higher percentage of the population being vaccinated now. Our vaccinations are, you know, we're, we, we've got tens of millions of people vaccinated. And that's good. Um, it's not herd immunity, but it's it's definitely going to help. I do think we will see more cases in the months to come. I, I think we'll see another kind of a wave in, in terms of the cases. I'm not sure if that's going to translate into another wave in hospitalizations because we have, for the most part, vaccinated a large percentage of our high risk population, large percentage of our high risk population. We have to keep in mind that's a very small percentage of the population 
that is contributing to the bulk of these hospitalizations. And once those, that percentage of the population is protected, even if you have another wave of cases, it doesn't necessarily translate into a wave of hospitalizations because you may come down with the thing, but uh, the, the vaccine protection is enough that it's keeping people out of the hospital. So even if, you're, even if you're in the very small percentage of you get vaccinated and you still come down with the thing, it's from what I've seen in the data, not enough to put someone in the hospital. The, the vaccine protection seems pretty significant. Um, and uh, so I, I will try to get an update written uh, soon uh, before I go on break to dive into some of the variants and how uh, that might play into our uh, vaccine herd immunity status. But it is nice to see numbers going down. We want them to keep going down because we don't want our hospitals to be on overload. And yeah, let's stay safe. Let's, let's keep being responsible. And hopefully we've been through with this, we've been through the worst of what we're going to see.